Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel, me918. Um, a wee bit of an experiment, and it's the first time I'm going to be doing one of these, and hopefully it goes well. The production value, as time goes on, will hopefully go up. But this is the first ever edition of the Selic, the Thunder, Celtic Fan Podcast, if you like. We'll call it that. I'm joined by a few of my pals. To, we're going to discuss a few things. We'll try and keep it short-ish. We've discussed this. Try and keep it around the half hour in the mark to see how it goes. So uh, I may as well introduce everybody one at a time very quickly. All you need to do is give a wee hello or something. So uh, first off, I've got Callum. Hello, Callum. Hello. Nice to see you. Then we've also got Paul, who's been in podcasts before. Hello, Paul. Hello. And uh, we've got two new people. They've been in a stream before, but that's about it. We've got David. All right. And we've got Kieran. Oh. Let's try to contain his laughter in the background there. Uh, How lovely. The nerves are... The nerves are... Look, just treat it as if you're a normal person on a normal show. This is your transition into your celebrity. Anyway. Good job. Right. I put out a tweet earlier and I asked what did people want to talk about and I feel like it's only proper to start with the first thing because this is what blew up on Twitter and this is blowing up again today. It went quiet for a while but the Patrick Roberts saga is kicking back up again. The question is, is he actually going to sign? We've seen all this talk with Nice, we've seen the talk coming back to Celtic. I don't know how to start with Kieran. Do you, want to, do you see Patrick Roberts actually coming back to Celtic? It's, I think it's the case that I would love to see him come back to Celtic. Uh, the this, reality is, he's probably got bigger things in mind. See, the only but, thing, you, when you see he's got bigger things in mind, right, the, the main talk, the, the, the main competition for us at the current minute seems to be a loan deal with Nice. Now, I'm putting myself into my probably my own bias set of shoes here, right, but if you're looking at a, a loan deal with Nice or a permanent deal to come back to somewhere where he knows he's going to play well, he knows every player around him, he knows he's got a good coach, good manager, surely to Christ, he would be coming back to us. I mean, I'd like to think that, but see when you think about it though, like he's got the chance to play in a new league, French league. Nice are in the last, like, they're in the same round as us for the Champions League playoffs. So I mean, I see that. Got, he's got every chance of playing in Europe next season, and I think they then just sign Wesley Schneider as well. They signed so, I mean, right. Wesley Schneider. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I can see the appealing side of things, but at the same mm. time, do you not think it would be a bother to him? Like, if he had to go, he had to learn a whole new language. Fit in with a, no, a new whole system and all the rest of it when he can just take the e- an easier route to sure. somewhere where he's going to be in the set. D- David, what do you, D- David, do you see Patrick Roberts coming back? That's the question. Well, I'd like him to, but then it's not about taking the easiest route. Because he went back to Man City to challenge himself, so maybe I think this is a challenge he would like to take as well. But do you know, see, feel free to jump in at any point, by the way, Paul, Calm, anybody else, feel free to just jump in if, if, if you've got something to rebuttal. But like, do you know, at the same time, though, I think that that was a wake-up call for him? Because it turns out, right, well, we don't know yet, you can't take it as official, but Pep Guardiola came out, and he, they, or no, Pep Guardiola, even this, the, a, a page or whatever, uh, sources are coming out saying Pep Guardiola's told me his new future, and he's, he's getting a, an exodus of young players, he's just getting rid of a lot of young players, and Patrick Roberts is one of them. So, do, do you, do you well, think... There you go. Patrick Roberts is, well, everybody in Celtic Pure loves him, right? But yeah. then, I don't think anybody actually expected them to get into the Man City team in the first place. I know, that's amazing. That's what I said. That's what I was saying. Like, you're going there and you've got to compete with who? They've just signed Bernardo Silva. They've they've got Sterling there. They've got Sat Powers there. They've got Sani. They've got all these players. He was never going to get in. But, I don't know. I I feel like, I feel like we've, we we need to stop. There's one thing though I feel like it's happening on Twitter is we're just getting our hopes too high for it happening. It died down a wee bit. But now it's happening again. And I, I... I, I, I think he lost the way he back. He's got the choice of being the big fish in the small pond coming up to the Scottish League game, which he's familiar with. Like, you know, he likes playing here with Celtic. You know, the fans love him. But I mean, as you said, if you think about it, Nice aren't really some weird Diddy club anymore. Uh, last they had a really season, good season aye, last year. Had a really good deal. They've got every chance of getting through the Champions League. Even if they don't, I can see them doing fairly well in the Europa League. I mean, it, I feel as though he's good enough that he could maybe break into that. No, I, I, I do yeah. see him breaking in there. It's up to him, because as David said, he did smile chat. See, oh, see yeah. the only thing I'm thinking of. Even though see. it's... Oh, there you go. Keep going. Right. As much as I'd love him to come back to Celtic, if you think about it in terms of the player, who will we hold back his career? I know, I mean, that is, that is true. He's bigger. He's going to be bigger than Celtic. Oh, aye, in the sure. yeah. it's, like the same, it's like the same as Dembele. Who will we stop his progress? Like, 
if you he's if he's getting regular game time in the French week, he's more likely got to develop better than he would in the Scottish week. And if you think about it in terms of the player, the best thing for him to do might not be to come to Celtic, but Aye. Well, then see, to take in other factors. I think about it. See if he does come to Celtic and in the next few years plays really well. Mm-hmm. There is a very high chance that a club in England will see. It's a, and it will go see, for a lot. It's, it, it's a financially beneficial deal, I'd say, because the fact the, the number being thrown about is six point eight million rising eight million pound. The fact he's English alone, and if he plays to the same standard as he has the last couple of years, surely we're talking upwards, maybe at, at least ten, fifteen million pound. We're going to get offered for him to leave us again in the near future. Easily, easily. See, see, see to buy him for it and under fifteen million. They'll need to make profit considering Man City bought him for what was it, sixteen million in the first place. Aye. No, I think if he was, goes, I think that's quite a inflated figure though, because they'll have definitely. Paid a lot less than what the papers are reporting. And that if 12 million that's pay. reported as is, is add ons and that. And the add ons are never going to get hinged on, are they? Aye, because there would have been, been stuff like appearances, goals, uh-huh. and he's had absolutely no chance. So it might be a lot less than what we were actually thinking. Kim, were you going to actually say something before I went on about like how the finances? Well, if you think about it, but Celtic sign players that are not known at all and then uh-huh. sell them to the Premier League. In this case, we would be signing someday for a decent amount of money for the Premier League. And if he played well for a few seasons, would he get that big move to a big club? I if see, he's not getting the chance to do it. I see you mean that. Granted, he will be a few years older. When you put it like that, it's kind of, it resembles the yeah, whole situation it's with never, Chris Sutton. It, for mm, me. it never really happens, mm-hmm. but like, Chris Sutton was a lot nearer the end he's Aye, fair, aye, he was out. Patrick Roberts just starting off, I mean, but Celtic have no, like, they've sell players to big teams in the Premier League, but they've never been bought through the Premier League aye. and then sell back. So I think that would maybe be like the first to account, because... In reality, if he was to play well for Celtic, Man City would be coming back in for him. Aye, I like, don't. I think he's when you leave a club like Man City, I think that's when, when especially so young. I don't see him ever going back there. I, know, I don't even see him maybe even getting. Do you think he would ever actually get back to that caliber like a team, Man City? Man I don't United know because like team? if he's getting offered I mean, teams like Southampton, the new, then if he moves to Celtic, it's the next logical step after Celtic Southampton. Uh, Paul, even though the new, it seems like a sideways thing. Uh, Paul, were you, were you going to say something? There? It would depend how well he played. I mean, if he played yeah. well enough, like a one Yama, who can go to something, then move on to a bigger it's team. It's European. Because mm-hmm. uh, Southampton have been thrown about as well. Like, if it comes to a decision between Southampton and even Celtic, because I heard Southampton were interested and it was, it was a choice between them, like at that point, then I think it would be a lot more tricky because a loan deal to Nice would be beneficial for him, but then, like, it's a completely different situation getting an actual permanent move to Southampton. Completely different. Cal, you've been quiet in the matter. If you before we move on, are we to go any further? Do you want to add anything to about the Patrick Roberts situation? I just think he'll come back. <clears throat> Is that, that, I, let's, let, we'll end the whole Patrick Roberts thing. On, like, do you think he'll actually, Paul? Do you see him coming back? Yes or no? Very possibly. Yes. Very, I don't see yes, Cal. You say no, David. Um, but when you put the factors out, I could see him coming back, but. I wouldn't get my hopes up. Uh, Kieran, do you say yes or no? Uh, there's every chance that he could come back to Celtic, but I mean, if I was him, I'd probably be thinking I'd for bigger things. But I mean, like, the new I'd say no. Nah. No, that see, I think it really depends as well on the, how the next twenty four hours go because Nice have said they want a response by what is it the night? Because uh, I've got that's the thing that. as well though because Celtic have apparently this is just Facebook talk as well Aye. which is basically so you, you have to you have to be careful with like, Facebook stuff like because it's so misleading uh, but I was but, like <laughs> apparently Celtic have said they're not going to sign them day before they're standing again Aye, which is quite worrying things. because if Patrick Aye. Roberts has got this sort of time frame which he's allowed to move to Nice and that Aye. and Celtic isn't an option on the table at the time he's ready to move mm-hmm. and it's more likely Celtic are going to miss it because I'd love to see it happen but. Fuck the exams, everybody will be waiting the morning to see if he goes to Nice. <laughs> I know, we're sitting there tossing our fingers waiting. Uh, if I was to give my final pick, I'd, I think it, I, I've got hope. I, I think I, I can see him come back, but well, as David said, I'm not going to get my hopes up about it. Um, see, I do think it would be a smart move. It would, I, him back. It really comes down to the, the final link. We don't know the finalised offers he's getting here. Like, we know Nice and yeah. Southampton are interested, but what's actual final is the question. I said before. Do you not think, like, as much as we'd love him to come back, I feel that's, as much as I'd say, it's kind of selfish for a point aye, of view. Aye. Because 
we really are, like, we could, like, obviously it's up to him in the end, but I mean, Aye. it's kind of selfish. I know. To point to see, I just hope as well. Better offers. There you go, David. For see, when you look at, like, well, this season, obviously, it's like a, an amazing season, right? Armstrong and Dembele have had so much, like, like people have been saying they're definitely mm. going to go, like, Chelsea. For Dembele, nah, right, but see if Patrick Roberts is only 20, see if he did come, had like three good seasons. I think three is pushing it, so I, much I think two. Uh, one or two, probably, I don't know. But we'll see, see. I know, but uh, I mean, like, he's only 20, no doubt a lot of clubs would rather wait till he, he maybe has a few more mm. years, like, yes, experience to go in. But like, if he comes, plays a few seasons in the Champions League, does well and presses. Maybe no Man City, but I could definitely see somebody coming in from for the Premier League with right. decent money. Paul, were you going mean, to... be a few oh. years older as well. Mm-hmm. But, but, mm-hmm. Yeah. Paul, were you going to get a quick final input uh, a minute ago? I mean... I'm just not... David says don't get your hopes up. I'm not gonna, but I, I can see it happen. To yeah. be honest, that's mm-hmm. one thing. What Kieran was saying, like we're being kind of selfish. One thing I hope doesn't happen is that. Twitter on that abuse him <laughs> like we're just going to give all this unnecessary abuse for not uh, coming back I hope that doesn't happen because you go to no he's looking up for the best of his career no, 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 no matter what he does I hope people support him I hope all sorts of your asses don't go off on that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably that'll be the, the main thing see if he was to go to Nice imagine Celtic go to Nice in the Champions League or Europe or whatever Oof, we the fire Plus, we are forgetting the most important the factor what's that Nice Nice don't have Kieran Tierney I know. Well, that's so. that's a true point. Very true point. So that's it. We'll take like so the Patrick Roberts saga thing, whatever you want. We'll move on for that. We'll see how it goes. I think the next week we'll really get a better idea. And who knows if we go into a second episode of us, we'll touch on that a bit more. Maybe who knows? So right, anyway, uh, moving on to the second thing, the Champions League draw. Astana has been gained us. Callum, how are you feeling going into Astana? What do you think is going to happen? You confident? You nervous? Well. See, in the home leg, we've got to win by it all. We've got to win like 3 0 or something like that to even like, just feel comfortable going away because when we go away, I, I don't see us winning the away tie. See, I definitely don't see us winning the one, away tie. When you say to feel comfortable, there's one thing that I learnt from last year. And, I've, and I always, I'm all, and here and David will all, they'll tell you, I'm always overly confident, right? But, mm-hmm. but last year, last year, you know, we're up 3 0 at half time. Me and David are sitting here singing. We're having a party having in the a Champions party League. In the Champions Bang, they make it 3 2. But we go up, right, mate, 5 2, we win. And at that point, you're thinking 5 2, surely we're through. But, I mean, no. that, we're that. We Ball here. Mm. Ball here. Craig Gordon had Craig to save Gordon. a penalty. Well, uh, Craig Gordon goes in. He Champions saved. League so, that's not really like recognised as much. Like, I, if you think about it, he's never always seen as the hero. I, mean, I know. I, I feel like he, get, he gets a lot of stick. People forget shit like that. Because of what happened today. Aye, he's some goalkeeper, but he is a dodgy bastard. Aye. But only as oh, there you go. He's a good goalkeeper, but he has his fair few moments. Aye, where he, dodgy. Do- I, I love him. I always thing. support him on the channel, nice. but but see, like the few weeks he traded football for like, UFC and stuff. Like, <laughs> people like, you know what I mean? He had about four red card offences last year. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Red card offences are four fucking assault offences. But like, it's in, in this playoff, <laughs> in this playoff round, I don't think there's any point where it's actually comfortable. It's it, unless we obviously we go up and get a massive comfortable result, and then we end up taking like a two 0 we away from home. Then I, at that point, it's comfortable. But Astana should. I mean, we, we narrowly beat them last year. Kieran, I, I, you're you're usually quite, you know, you're quite talkative and stuff like that. Do you think Astana are going to be just as dangerous? Do you calling for the worst? The Calum's gave us point. What are you thinking about it? See, obviously, like when it comes to Celtic and the Champions League qualifiers, even though the season we just came off it, it's impossible to be confident. Like mm. I'm never confident with Celtic in the qualifiers because I've been let down so many times before. But you would think coming off a season like that, fair enough, we can beat anybody, but. It's Celtic at the end of the day. That's why. Right. Oh, you could keep going. Mm. I mean, we Astana, we did beat them last year. At the same time, we did scrape past them, but something I know, like, some of these, I seen some of say it, and it was, we drew one each of them away from home with Owen O'Connell and Effie Ambrose as the back two. Oh. I can't remember if that was the actual back two, but even at that, like, Celtic are a lot better this year, and you would hope that we could get past them comfortably, but what you need to is can. As well. But we also need a good performance because you can't a wee bit, but we'll just keep right. going. We beat who was Bushy five two. Bushy five two. Bushy. Right. 
and then we went out there and got beat two 0 and everybody was absolutely shitting myself. So I think if we get a big one at home, but without conceding, I'll be confident for the second leg. But at this at this rate, I really don't. See, I, I, I do believe we can get past off. them, but confidence is not the word. See, that's one thing I'm certainly guilty of. See what you were saying. Like, I think heading into this, this set of qualifiers, and I, I don't think I'm the only one. I don't know if any of you are the same. Uh, but there's plenty of other people who took the same mindset as me. Head into the qualifiers after back here, an invincible treble winning season. I was saying, look, we yeah. should be breezing through, no bother. Nobody here should be able to touch us after that. But after Rosenberg, no so much Linfield, but after Rosenberg and now head into a game where I'm a lot more nervous, it's really been a wake up call to show that, like Kieran said, it's Celtic, you know, we can't. They let us down before, they can let us down easily again. <laughs> it's like. I've, like you've got to keep in mind that like, Astana just put a leg of Warsaw. Like, nah, and they're not they're, they're they're really team at all. Team. That's a good team. Like, as no. if, like we look at what is it, we got beat 6 1 after them. Like, mm. so like, we're we're they, uh, they've obviously. Times change. Times a lot better. Aye. Uh, and it's like as well, like going into that Rosenberg game, they struggled to put away Dundalk, and that was leaving the image that we should go and beat them. And now, and now we're playing a team who. What was the actual aggregate score against uh, Legia Warsaw then, you know? 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 3-2. 
I don't think it would ever get like as bad, but I just hope. I know, see that. See, I think like everybody thinks Celtic's good, right? But obviously Celtic fans, but I think some people they like rip it a wee bit when they think Celtic. Like, for instance, see the Celtic in England argument. Mm-hmm. See the people who genuinely think Celtic could win the league or top finish top Aye, four. That, that's a very first, that's a very small minority. In the first season, I know, Aye. but. That's a subject in the same, but because like if you think about it, like if Celtic were like, to go into the English Premier League with the team that we've got, then uh, we wouldn't have a chance. At- I always, I always say, I always, never, a, never a million years. I always say, I would, at best mid table, at best. Aye. It would definitely be in that kind of. It definitely be in that kind of region of Stoke, and that, but we'll, we'll come on to that in like a different. It would be money. Aye. That, that takes us aye. 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 It would definitely come on to that in like a different probably podcast, bro. Because that is something that. Obviously, people want to hear talk about, but um, mm-hmm. whole other thing. If we do go into the Europa League, like, personally, I'm not going to be massively disheartened. Of course, I feel disappointment in some way, but at, at the same time, we go into Europa League, like, and it's just a, at that point, you know, it, you've definitely proceed. We've got to get through the group. In my opinion, if we go into Europa League, like, you've because got to get through the group. I, if Celtic were to go into Europa League, like, then I would have a lot higher standards of what I'd expect for Celtic. I'd expect yeah, Celtic yeah. to be pushing further. Like, mm-hmm. if we went into Champions League this year, people are saying, oh, we should be pushing for the last 16. I think that's still out of your reach, the news. Nice. But mm-hmm. I think if Celtic want to make it Champions League this year, what I'd want and oh. expect is third place in the group. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, when I say I run in the Europa League, I mean, like, at least get past the 32. Or the 32. I also see, it all just quicker. depends, doesn't it, on the group you get? Because yeah, see, yeah, like, yeah. see the amount of groups, like, say, like, always get quite hard groups in the Champions League. Mm-hmm. Like, it is always, but see, you can just... See if we did get a bit of luck and we got last 16. Mm-hmm. I, I still don't know if I would rather get last 16 or else get third and then maybe go on a decent run in the Europa League. Because mm. see if we... Like, I know it is a bit optimistic, but see if we did get, like, quarterfinals or even <laughs> semis... <laughs> That's probably pushing it a bit, right? But I'd, I'd, pro- I'd prefer that than Fuck it, we're on the road to Leon, no, like, I think, like, see, for, like, the, the last 16 in the Champions League, that's going to give us a lot more money to improve. I know. They need to forget to, like, the quarterfinals. And then again, last 16 in the Champions League, would you rather, last 16 in the Champions League or the quarterfinals of Europa League? Well, I'm not saying we would get there, but would you I, I, I would In prob- terms of like, a season, I'd prefer Europa League, but... See uh, that's for improvement, like, see when you say, see when you say that, though, Keelan, it's like, I, I would go for quarterfinals of Europa League just to put it out there, but at the same I, time... I can already imagine the heartbreak I get knocked out in the quarterfinals because at that point I'd be saying to myself, right, this is it, we're going the whole way. Ah, you're going no, the whole way. Then... Serious. When you get to that sort of stage, you think, mm-hmm. right, that this could be a year. But it, that's the thing, Europa League, like, I feel the quality of the teams in it is like, every year now, it's because of how good the teams in England have got. There's always going to be a team, like, a couple of teams missing it on the top four. Yeah. And there's always going to be a team a good quality for England that are going to be in the Europa League mm-hmm. this time. Like, yeah, but, um, like, years ago, it would have been, like, Everton. Mm-hmm. Nah, and they what would are the big more, teams in the Europa League issue? Hold on. Hey, Arsenal. 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 AC Milan have got to qualify still, but Aye. AC Milan, Ajax I guess, will get there. Ajax will get there. Ajax will get there. And, I mean, Ajax, Ajax got to... Like, this, so. this time, like, if we were to draw Ajax in 2013, I'd be saying to myself, we could put them out. But this year, would be like... I mean, they got to the final last year. Did I actually get Rosenberg? Different class now. Aye. I did not know that. I would like to see Rosenberg. Wait, what did you say? Yeah, I actually get Rosenberg. Did not know that. Um, I don't know. I'm looking at it. But Callum, Callum, if you were to say, oh sorry, I'm going to go, David. I wasn't. I wasn't even speaking. But anyway, see if we go. (laughs) Oh, I wasn't speaking. But anyway, (laughs) I I wasn't speaking. But since you've invited us here, I think it depends what run we get in Europa League because. See if we go a similar thing to what Man United got. I'm not bashing Man United, I'm just saying they got the easiest mm. run. Yeah, Europa League. I'm not going to disagree with you. I know, because that Apart from teams like easy. Ajax and... No, but like, see if Celtic got handed that though. Like, would you fancy your chances? Mm-hmm. Like, if Celtic got handed Celta Vigo. Well, Celta Vigo's later on. But aye. Celta Vigo haven't proved. See if we were on good form again, like... See if you handed us out of it go no, you'd be a bit more worried, but see if you gave us them last season when we were like a good way through the mm-hmm. season unbeaten. You would I would, I would, I would definitely be sitting there fancy my chances, I mm-hmm. I think I'd reevaluate you at this point. But um Aye aye, obviously, but I mean aye. if you're halfway through the season, but keep, I know it's Scottish I know it's a Scottish league and everybody's granny could come up here and score, but I mean aye. if we are actual banging Playing, playing heavy goods. See, I think the only thing that separates Celtic from progressing in Europe is 
see if we go to that knockout round. I think a, a, a really good home performance and a solid defensive performance mm-hmm. away from home that could see th- us through against Aye. a lot of teams. See, that's why I was, was, was going to come on to Calm because I feel like you've been sitting <laughs> in the back burner for a wee bit here. Um, I was, I was going <laughs> to come and ask, like, see, against Astana, do you think it would be risky for us to go at guns play like, do you, how do you see Astana playing first do you think they're going to cut the park heat defend or do you, do you think we should nah, be they're, they're come, I think I think they're just going to come here and just like play their game uh, I think they'll just like try and defend well, they'll, they'll defend but like sit a bit deeper and just soak up the uh, pressure and then try and get us in the counter uh, yeah, I think that's uh, how they're going to play as well but. see Rosenberg right. even away for there see for like the first 60 minutes after they were really defensive like even uh, away and then see, it was when they started pushing a lot more, so like got the opportunities. See, I think the only thing that would worry me is see if in the home tie, the nightmare result would have been not even a nut and extra, but a one and extra, because then they've got their way goal, mm-hmm. and we've not been able to beat them at home. Aye. But then again, it's odd to have Celtic play, because Celtic could go and bash them. I would say 5-2, but hopefully it's no conceding. It feels like, I, mean, I just hope what doesn't happen again is another 90th minute penalty where I couldn't oh, find four rows, <laughs> four rows down. Yeah, that, right that, that, round, that round is cost for us, man. Aye, I, don't, I don't like that round at all. But uh, <laughs> I, if I was, like, we'll quickly move on to a prediction just to move away from the Astana stuff because we're hit about 25 minutes something here so try so Astana uh, do we see us getting through Europa League or Champions League uh, Callum Europa League Champions where do you think we're going Champions League Kieran. but I think I think the tie against Astana will be very 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 close could by any chance do you think we'll be getting that ABBA type penalty shoot kill yourself <laughs> I don't think that applies for the oh is that no in European League? I think it's just in the English Cups and that this year ah. Right, all right. We came, it's just getting trialed. Uh, do you think uh, Champions League Europe League? Champions League because I've got belief, but even though I always see Celtic as the underdogs, regardless who are playing in these sort of rounds, but I, I do believe we, we can go through. So I'd say Champions League. Well, definitely good enough. David, Paul, you, do you think you're the, you're yeah. the same boat? You go, Champions Paul, you League. We could, um, we've, got, we've got much better players, and the only worry is to travel into Kazakhstan. Mm, that, that's well, like, that we there was one thing... Again. There was one thing at, um, that, that that was brought up in the press conference I was watching when we were just drawn, and it was I think it was an interview like Lee Griffiths who was saying does it does it help that they've already travelled there they know what to expect, like I think that will come into some sort I think they'll be more prepared mentally physically whatever for this actual Aye. this away leg this time because it's not going to be completely foreign to them because they've experienced it before mm-hmm. and it's not like it was like five years ago it was last year Aye, last year. But uh, I, David, do you think we're going to get through? Uh, I think we'll get the Champions uh, League. Like. I, I, I think it's the only reason I really asked is because I did, and even when we were playing Rosenberg, I seen people in my comments, Celtic fans in the comments, were saying like, "No, I don't think we're going to even put through, get through Rosenberg." See, so, I, I was really skeptical about Rosenberg because I knew they were decent. Like, I think people were writing them off. Like, seriously, why people wrote off Gladbach last year aye, when we were playing home as if we should have beaten them easy days? Like, we probably should have beat Rosenberg a bit. We had a few more goals, but mm-hmm. I mean, Aye, cause like was all just also. I think the lack of the striker was made that round a lot more difficult than it had to be. Mm-hmm. But gone in, I was a lot more skeptical. Uh, right, quickly moving on to the next thing. We don't know how long we'll end up talking about this. Stuart Armstrong, should they stay? Should they go? What the? What's the whole business here happening? Um, anybody want to volunteer? To Cal, Cal, you want to volunteer? Do you want to? But what you say he should stay, right? Of course, like, of course, I would happily love to see him stay. But at this point, it feels like. I don't know, to me, just personally, I feel like he's taking the piss. I feel like this, uh, this contract, is, it's no difficult. We should know if his agent's like, we want this, Celtic should be saying, right, we can give you or we can't give you one of the two, and if mm-hmm. we can't give him it, he should have been gone by now, or at least somewhat, I should be seeing a rumour that somebody's in for him. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's taking so long, but I feel like he is taking the, the piss a wee bit here. I feel like, obviously you'd want to see him stay because he's one of our better players, mm. but see, like, Obviously, see if he doesn't sign the contract. Like Aye. next year, something's gonna get him in a free. Do you know what I mean? Like, Aye, exactly. Thought, Can I was gonna get rid of him, get rid of him now because and get money for him. What is it like in West Brom? Where they put it off for like it was like five million or something like that. I don't know. West Brom were off on some things. form of money, and I mean that mm. is most certain. Like to a, to a team like Chelsea, Man United, that's fuck all, right? Yeah. We'll just let him go for free. We'll keep him there for year. But to Celtic, that is massive money. It's good money. That, that is good massive. money, uh, and we need it. Paul, Stuart Armstrong, I, 
what is your your opinion on the whole situation in, in, in general? Like, I know he, obviously you'll probably prefer to see him stay, but what in general is your, your opinion and stuff in there? Like, obviously I'd like to see him stay, but see, like, do we, like, see that with the sentiments of what they know? Aye, that's what I was going to Do we about. really need him desperately? Because we've got McGregor, Brown, Rogic, we've got all these brilliant sentiments. I, I feel like a, a lot of people are so to... we need him. I feel like a lot of people mm-hmm. be saying like wait because see on it like McGregor for me McGregor and then like so far for the games we've seen and obviously it's not a lot and it's hard to judge but so far what we've seen we've seen McGregor and Cham and Brown as one of the three we've seen Armstrong Brown and then Cham we've seen all these different combinations but the main combinations that we've seen so far I think without Armstrong we've been the better team so far and I've and I love Stuart Armstrong I think he's a great player but for me just for the first few games and it's not a lot to judge by and that's why I'm not really caring too much. But so far, I think it looks as though with foot arm. Uh, do you think this season, Kieran, I'll move on to you, Kieran or David, one or two. Kieran, do you think Armstrong does want to go? Because for me, he's not had a decent performance in any of the qualifiers or, a, or anything like that yet. Do you like to go or like go? I would, I know, but. See, what do you think? Yeah, like, there's many factors in this. If he wants to stay, but his agent is the one pushing for more money, and he's just hiding behind his agent in this situation, he might not want to leave Celtic, but. His agent's pushing for. Aye, aye, I, I, I can see what you mean because uh, it happens a lot. Because aye. You, then you've got to think, is Brendan Rodgers expecting him to leave? Because in Cham, wasn't he brought in for no reason? Because we've already got mm-hmm. central midfielders. Is he there? Is aye, he there brought in Ben you as well. Like, when you put it aye. that way, you ca- I think they've kept quiet and a lot, and, they're just, and Brendan Rodgers keeps rehashing mm-hmm. that we hope he signs the contract soon. Uh, David, uh, David, do you think like, all along Brendan Rodgers is new? He's gone. No, dude. Um, he's just trying to hide it for the fans for a while. I'm not sure because I, I don't know if I don't know if well, I don't know if Brendan Rodgers is somebody who would kind of no belt front of it. And, but see if you went last year, Armstrong was a pure key part because it was it was oh. so spontaneous. It would it would sh- like it wasn't scared to shoot. Aye, because I said I said it time and sorry, I'm going to jump in just for a second. You can continue because I said it time and time again on the channel, like especially towards the tail end of last year. When it came to Everton defending, attacking, passing, I thought he was our best player. When you put Everton together, like no, just one thing, I thought he could do the lot. That was that was just my mm-hmm. go keep going. Mm-hmm. See, even like like last year, it was so good. He, he's passing. He created so many opportunities. Like I know mm. people smell still the like the line, the line, like Sinclair, and that, but he actually did so much. But see, like this season and qualifiers, he's just looked no interested at all. I mm-hmm. understand it's still early, and same with Roger a wee bit. Like the last few games, Roger have played. He's been he's been fucking shit. Mm. Stephen Rosenberg, Aye. the one, and uh, even Brown as well. I'm sure Brown was just a one half game. See Brown, Armstrong, and Roger. They actually done nothing. Aye. Rod- that's, that's Armstrong, Aye. We like the combinations. The and they run back, and it wasn't until Hayes lost the ball as well, and he ran back and got it. You seen that Brown was not doing it and Armstrong was not doing it and Roger was not doing it. Aye, that's what I'm saying. I think like, the determination of uh, the what was it Linfield game you were talking about? No, was it not Linfield? Rosenberg was it? Rosenberg. Was Aye. this the first leg? Aye, mm-hmm. the one that you. Then you got to just playing another system that game. Like Aye. they're only playing the way the normal play, so. Ah, there's always different aspects you can look for. He just, he just, see, like, I know he's, he's no, it's not as if he's had an awful pre-season, right? But, and I know it's still pre-season and people still get where it's not anywhere else. Like, but I mean... Nah, we're in the season now, but basically, we're just at pre-season. He's just no looked. See, like, then you've, it, he's looked a bit disinterested this season, mm-hmm. that's what he does. But he looks then as if he's no like, He's not had his stride yet, but then again, last year, granted, he never got the same sort of game time that he's been getting this season. But Aye. he never had his stride until October. Aye. It was the semi final against Rangers in the mm-hmm. League Cup, in which we thought, right, he can play. Yeah, he, should be, he should be starting games, yeah. that was when you fought it. But then again, you've got to think is he really getting a bit ahead of himself here, thinking he's had one good season, like one proper full good Aye. season with Celtic? That's is he was... ready to go and play in the Premier League yet? Yeah. I, no, I, I, really. I, I don't think he's ready, but that was the thing I was going to talk about just uh, after you were done there. I was going to say, like, I don't want to say I find it insulting, but I don't know. It's just something about me. that, for, And obviously, it's different, and I say it as well. It's different when you're getting waved triple your wages in your face. Yeah. But, like, I don't know why. I just can't imagine the the attraction for moving for Celtic to such a negative team like West Brom, who are never going to be in... <laughs> who are never going to be in any sort of European football, who Ever. are just... 
they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, time and time again, you're talking about West West Brom potentially going down last season. They had a strong season, yeah. but they were they weren't playing. I don't see, think Armstrong would fit into that team. I just think see if it can't see just because Armstrong is so good, uh, he is worth taking the kind of risk and keeping him, even if it doesn't work out because he, he is amazing. But uh, I, I, I think don't, he just see. I take a different he, look. I, I, I think uh, I don't see the uh, see if he's no if he's no good. At, and I've said it week in week in week. If he's no good at signed by at least like. The week January. before, no, this, because January could just That's sign a pre-contract. If he's not got it signed a week before the deadline, uh, get him with the transfer market and get him gone. That's my opinion. You said you might keep him, and I respect that a day, but my opinion is take the money. I, I, see, I, see, look, you, uh, Callum McGregor has been amazing, right? Best central midfielder um, in the club, without a doubt, right now at the current minute. Aye, I know he is, but like, you just me. Armstrong has just got something that. Like, Roderick has it obviously as well, but he just gets, aye, or Roderick as well, like, Roderick's a bit bigger, you know, I'm sure a bit plunkier, but he's got, he's just got something that, like, McGregor's been amazing, but you just don't, he, like, see if you were to put, like, somebody on in the last 10 minutes of a game to change it, you'd probably put Armstrong on, hmm. like, see, if you were there attack. Case. I think in Cham's here to replace that, because I think in Cham mm-hmm. offers something a bit more different, he mm-hmm. might not have shown it yet, but I feel as though that's why uh, he's here to take. Armstrong's points. Like, but for me as well, see if Armstrong goes to West Brom, I don't know if any's agree with me, but I just see him turning into like James Morrison. Or uh, <laughs> somebody like I that. He's just kind of so irrelevant. He's, he's a good player when it's free flow and attacking. I just, I, I right. wouldn't see what he would offer to West yeah. Brom because it's not yeah, as if they're going to be. West Brom's system is just so okay. keep the other team up. Mm. Aye. And then take your chances when you get them. Right, so we know David. But David said he'd keep him. I'm, I'm keep him. He'd I, keep like, him I. I think he's good to let go. Move like, on. He, he makes a difference. Paul, Paul, do you, what would you do if he's not? We'll just put it into the scenario. We're on the 20th, 25th of August. Say 25th of August, contract's still been signed. Uh, what do you do? Are you keeping them? Are you taking the gamble, just keeping them the year and, and by a lucky might stay? Or are you, are you selling them for the money? I, I'd get the money because it's not that we desperately need them. We've got. Sentiments that can do just as well as you. How much Maybe money? Europe in the league. How, How much, much money are you talking? I, I, I mean, I, I because think he's in the final year of his contract, mm-hmm. you can't expect too much. Aye, that's why I would think about maybe like three million. million. Is a decent amount. I think it'd be about three, three point five. Million See, million. I, no, I understand no five million is a lot for everybody, jumped. especially Selic. But we are in like a bit. Well, obviously, we're in probably one of the best financial oh. states we've been in. And a player like Armstrong who can make a difference is a risk. I think is willing to take. See, then again, you think mm-hmm. we don't need to be a selling club, but in the instance where we're going to let one of our best players go for nothing, then you've got to think, right, you're alright, we're selling him on. Callum, I think, like, are you on the, would you, same scenario, 25th of August, would you keep us sale? Who's can, who convinces oh, you now? Because I know you, like, I've always, when we were on Xbox or whatever, you, you're always one of the people who, you like Armstrong, I know that. Mm-hmm. Like, you're, you're a big fan of Armstrong. But, like, if it's coming, would you be in David's shoes or be in, like my shoes here? See, if I'm honest, obviously you'd love to keep him, but if you kind of just like five million. If it is five million, just say it is for the night, just for talking sake. You kind of just let that go. Like, try, you'd, you'd rather have like the five million than let him go on a free. I so, mean, so I'd probably just sell him. See, see if he is going to play that season, he is not going to sign the contract, but he's going to have the same season as last season. Are you going to keep him? And he's going to help in Champions League. Well, then again, but like, like if, if he's, he's going to sit on the bench, season, then that's not really much if he's go, if he's going to sit on the bench for a fight, then obviously get rid of him, get the money. Like, uh, we, we can bring in another player. But if he's going to be a, a, a key part of the season, then I would, I would well, obviously, I would, I would let him stay if he's going to be uh, another key this. member of the team. Yeah, I can see both sides of the argument, but you kind of just. I see money like that, you can just let it pass. Just quickly right, before, so quickly before Kieran goes on, this is this, this is why I like this is why I wanted to make like this kind of podcast. Like, for example, if this was me just talking myself, I'd be going right and sell them. But we're getting different <laughs> opinions. Just why I make that point clear. Let me know your opinion, but people listening by the way. But Kieran, on you go, you guys say something. Personally, I'd sell him because I mean, as much as I love him, he's more than capable of going missing in big games. See if he went back at the game away from home in Munchen Gladbach, mm-hmm. he was not existent. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I can it. remember a few nah. times. See, if that is the case, then would you also sell Sinclair? Because Sinclair, he was the best player of the season last year, but let hands down. But I can, I can how many games has he went missing? Like, big games, like I even couldn't. even in the five uh, one against Rangers, right? And he was good. But the amount of chances he missed against Rosenberg. See the people who said, "Now, nah, like, uh, Alex Scott Sinclair does annoy me sometimes because you know he's yeah. so good and he goes missing in games." 
and, and pops up and then gets like right. praised for it. But see, again, shows them people Rosenberg. just nah. See the amount of people who say they had some performance against Rosenberg. It was good defensively. It was balls. I never seen him Bennett going forward. It was it was good well, defensively. We the we've, goal. We've We've got a defence, we've got a midfield. Like, that's, yes, sort of, that's the same sort of thing here. You'd say that I understand that. Like, he did set up the goal, but it's the same kind of thing as people, James uh, Forrest overall, scored a goal. Like, I know, so it's James Forrest. I, like James, I don't mind like James Forrest. Oh, well, I'll we'll probably go in there. in a heartbeat, man. That's so him in a heartbeat. I, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't think he gets so much hate. Like, he isn't, good, he, isn't, he isn't as good as Roberts, right? And he's always going to get compared to Roberts, but I think people maybe need to lay off him a wee bit. Right, see, like... like I'd rather see Hayes though. That's the thing, Hayes just needs to what, break into the team and ah, get yeah, a solid few games in, in a row. Well, he's not really been getting the chance, he's, he's even started that many games. And plus he... It's, no, it's not even started yet. I think he started one. Playing away. like Stoker as well, because like, obviously... Ah, he started the uh, Linfield away, did he know his? No, no. No, he was probably. Oh, Rosenberg away, was it? No, it was Bugway. Aye, so it was Rosenberg away. And then he'd get brought off. And then Ryan Guber sat and saying, get Forrest off, and then... Look, I mean, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore. Like, see, you've got to look at... See against Rosenberg, Nebdy played well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't think standard performances in the set in the se- in the first leg. I remember saying Gordon I are great performances. Second leg, I don't really remember a standard performer. Griffiths was good because he did change the game when he came on. Aye, Aye. Aye. I suppose. In... Griffiths this season has been a different class. I know. Uh, see, nah, some will come on here probably. We we'll won't go too much in there like the Griffiths Aye. striker or something. The thing I see about Forrest or before hang me. Mm. The only thing that annoys me is. He shites his set again for tackles. Aye. And oh, he always tries to outside the fit. See, the other thing with Forrest is, aye, as you said, with the outside of the fit thing, mm-hmm. but like, because he's really one fitted in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But I mean, see, what else annoys me? It does shite at tackles and that, but see, going forward as well, he just never takes the risk that Roberts would mm-hmm. take. He just tries to take on That, that could be done to the fans because, see, if Roberts took on a player and lost the ball, then maybe they would really mm-hmm. care. But see, Forrest was to take Aye, on a play. Forrest is no, but Forrest is the end. Everybody end gets on his back that. straight away. See if people were a wee bit But bullied, I feel like you've got to look at it for the same, like, but David, you, you're saying that people gave him a chance. He's been in the team for 2012, 2011 now. I know, He's but, had plenty of time for a chance. In all fairness, uh, just saying, the Celtic team is a whole new team since Rogers. Aye, but, like, uh, you can't uh, exactly But you've got to remember, like, before, before Brendan Rogers came in, James Forrest, I kept saying, sell him, get rid of him, no use. Aye. And then he came in, he had that brief spell under Brendan Rodgers when he was playing consistently week in, week out, he was playing really well. And he was keeping Roberts at the team. I was keeping Roberts at the team for like the start of the season. And I've, it's like before that, and I know you're saying that it's a new team and that, but you kind of just erased the four years that, when he didn't make an impression. I know, because like, like, Forrest, I don't remember the last time Forrest actually tried to run a player. Like, I know, but she, at least Roberts tried to do run players. So if he messed up, he, but I always say that tried, did try to do it. Unlike Forrest, Robert had that respell. Like I know, I, I know the whole hang is there's no consistent. But see, right. just the fact they had that respell. See if Rogers can just get the most out that spell. Should that not just kind of, if he can keep Roberts at the team for a short period of time, I'm sure it was Rogers would just the start of the season as well because Roberts was really struggling to get game time. I'm sure he, Rob- Forrest was starting Champions League games. I, I'm sure mm-hmm. Forrest, if he could do that for a spell, I'm sure he could do it for the full season. Look at players like Boyata who have pure change. Just he needs just a wee bit more work, and he I won't believe... be a world beater. I see, because I don't want to go out and deliberately give him all sorts of hate. It's just he uh, annoys me too much for me to sit back and defend the guy. Because be let's look at Rosenberg. He scored the goal, then ten minutes later, yeah, he aye. missed an absolute sitter. Yeah, that's a bit... See, that's the thing. Like Forrest, as you say, is unfairly treated. I mean, Willie Disney they performances frequently enough to merit a lot of praise. He gets a lot more hate than. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, I'm not saying he's like, the best player on the team or anything like if it. See if we did sign Roberts and we had his and that, I would say, and we were getting a, a decent amount of money, then fair enough, let him go. But I, I feel like, see if it was Roberts who made the mistakes, I don't think he would get as much I, abuse. That's, that's the thing though, like, James Forrest has become the whipping boy for the mm-hmm. hate. Like, the mm-hmm. I'll support, agree with like. that. And, and I'm not I mean, going to say I'm not mm-hmm. guilty of doing it as well, but... I th- in my opinion, Forrest, if he just gets his head done and finds consistency, he'll be more than good. Like, he'll do more than enough this season to like, merit enough praise for the Celtic sport. Because he's capable of having a good season. He just really needs to get his head done and mm. work. Well, 
I don't know if anyone's got any final closing words on the forest situation, or are we free to move on? Anybody got any final words to add in? No. Let me publish it, he got his knob. <laughs> I don't know. I was in the, I was in the I mean, record such a long time. Uh, <laughs> we'll find them. We'll find the daily record article for like 2011. <laughs> then we'll, we'll find it. Um, right, we were going to talk about we like, we've went about 40 minutes now, so we were going to. Uh, we were going to originally talk about the yeah, way, like the fan behaviour as we've seen recently, but we'll, we'll, we'll save that. Maybe, yeah. We'll save that for maybe another like, one or next something. Podcast. Aye, we'll save that for the next one. We're going to talk about. Well, so, you can make a part two of the podcast. Put it up tomorrow. Could do that, I suppose. Could do that. Oh, but maybe, maybe the next. I uh, don't want. You've, like. you've got to save it for you know. You've got to say I hundred likes. We'll lose it tomorrow. But um, <laughs> right, we'll end off then. I suppose we're just doing what I'm going to probably end after most of the podcast. We've got two games this week. God knows how often these podcasts will be. Maybe weekly. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, this one's just an experiment. Um, so we've got two games to look forward to this week. They've got the prestigious Betfred Cup match tomorrow night against Kumarnuk. And we'll then, jump off the. Seats and in the stairs, cause the exam results. <laughs> Aye, we've got we've got Com- we've got Coman up tomorrow night, and we have got Partick Thistle in the league on Friday. Score predictions: I'll go first. I think for Coman up, it really I, I can see us maybe rotating the team a wee bit because we've got such a like we've got a league game on Friday. But uh, even at that, we should be easily disposing. We beat them six one last year at Parkhead, so I'll go I'll go three 0 and uh, away to Partick, they're just after the back of getting beat off Hibs, so I do see us beating them, I don't see us dropping points or anything. Um, I will go with um, a 2 0 win away to Partick. Paul, come on at Partick, your predictions. Uh, for the more, I'm going to say 2 0, because I think he's going to play a bit of a weakened team because he's got the game on Friday. And then for Partick, I'm going to say 3 1. Before I ask David and that, I'm going to, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to keep a wee tally of who gets the most re- right results and who knows, we'll buy a bottle of champagne for the one. £175 Amazon gift card for <laughs> the, um, David Kilbarnock, Partick, score predictions? I think, I think we'll win comfortably. Like, we will play a weakened team, but then see what we will feel like in the midfield especially. There isn't much a weaker team. Like, it's not as if a weak team's weak anymore. Aye, exactly. But you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I do see us rotating. I don't mm. see us conceding, even though we're a wee bit dodgy still at the back, I would say. 3 0. And then. For fuck's sake. Oh. Means are probably the exact same as everybody else's, man. I think means are actually identical to that. Do you know what? And then. No, I'm kidding. And then. Partick, I would say. I think it'll be a wee bit more difficult, but I'll say. 1 0. 1 0. Kieran? Yes, sir. Um, well, I was going to say 3 0. Like. For <laughs> I don't think we will concede we could. They might get a goal, but I think if they get a goal, we'll just put in the counter attack and duty. Aye, and we'll order to be up. Trip at defensive errors, but Aye. we partick this up. We, I don't know, like, part of me thinks 2 0, but I'd, I'm going to say 2 1. I think they might get a goal. Uh, finally, Callum, what about you about to go with? No disrespect to Coleman, look at that, right? But they are absolutely awful. Like, no, no, like, awful, awful, but like. They picked up a wee bit, it. to be fair. They picked up a wee bit on... When they got rid of... Oh, but did they even get rid of him? They lost the manager last year. He went away to wherever the yeah, fuck he went to. And then they actually picked up. And they're like, okay, maybe that was for the best. But yeah. I can't believe you might go with. I'd do it 4-0. 4-0. I thought yeah, you were going to go higher. I thought you were going to go a bit 6. No, no, no. Well, in the first round no. last year, who did we have again? Motherwell, we beat them 5-6? 5-0, like. Uh, yeah. And then Donald Mitchell was still there. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll go. I don't know. Um, it's not that difficult. <laughs> I is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say two 0 
2 0. Right, well, hopefully, we've got our score predictions. Yeah, Ryan, you should really have started this by week team starting on. Right, let's get right <laughs> into the well, no, Eventually, our time, we might develop some sort of intro, but. Uh, <laughs> just put Jake Paul in the car. If you started it like that, I would have killed myself. <laughs> <laughs> I would have just left the same thing. Aye, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you did enjoy the first. I don't. It went on a wee bit longer than we intended, but I think it, it went well. Conversation <laughs> forward, I enjoyed yeah. it. So, uh, I hope you did enjoy it. Let me know what you thought in the description. As I said, their time, I know the description of the comments. Our time, we will probably try and up. <laughs> The production value and stuff may get camera shit involved, and over time probably we'll have more p- people on and stuff like that. Oh so, okay, okay. Aye, Chris Sutton, he's going to join us. Don't worry, episode ten, special episode. I think Mark Warburton. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, and hopefully this will be available on other stuff soon, like iTunes and shit. But we'll see. Uh, and uh, I see you all next time. Yeah, head yourself, Bye.